everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel, Relax Cut Glue. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you all here with me today. So today I'm going to be making a cover out of a Cheez-It box for my personal um, junk journal. <laughs> it's not really made out of junk, so I guess it's just a journal. Um, I bought a junk journal kit off of Etsy and it's all like watercolor and uh, bumblebees and I thought it would be really cute. Um, for my summer kind of junk journal. I'm just going to use this to write like positive quotes and doodle in and write whatever. It's just going to be for personal use. I'm not going to show it on camera because I'm probably going to add, you know, I'm going to actually use it as a journal. So um, I want to make a cover out of this Cheez-It box. So I thought I'd bring you guys along and show you how I do that. It's super easy easy peasy lemon squeezy so first things first I'm gonna open up the bottom of the box and then there's the side where it's connected I'm going to tear that open so I can have one flat piece of cardboard now you can do this with any cardboard uh, you don't have to just do it with a, a cheese it box you can do it with a, any kind of box you want to use it uh, use so the first thing I'm going to do is cut off all this excess stuff and just leave this panel, this panel, and this panel. So let's do that. I think I'll just add it into my trimmer here. And I'm going to actually cut it on the inside of the scored piece here because I don't want this little bump to be at the end of my book there. So this right here is the spine, obviously, because like here's our book, right? But this spine is way too big for me. So I'm going to show you an easy way to reduce the spine. And I'm going to do that by slicing. Well, I'm going to kind of level these up on my cutting mat here. Let's see. I'm about equal here. Okay. I'm going to split this right down the middle. I'm just cutting the spine directly down the middle. And you'll see what I'm going to do here. It's okay if it's just a tiny bit off, you can fix it. Okay, so now that my spine is closer to an inch, it's just a little over. Anyway, so what I do now is I just glue this spine on top of this spine. And the best part about this is this doubles up your spine and makes it stronger. So that works really well. So then your book would close like this and your spine will be smaller now. And then this is the back. So I do like doing this, um, however, I think sometimes when you keep the this right here attached, it makes it the book a little bit more stiff and I don't want when I open and close my book for it to be very stiff. I know, it sounds crazy. So what I'm going to do is actually remove my spine completely so if you want to keep it this way, this is the easiest way. Just now glue this on top of this, and now you've double, doubled up your spine. You have a stronger spine, and you're ready to just get decorating on your glue book cover, okay? I'm going to actually take it a little step further here, and I'm going to cut this off. I need a new blade. But I don't want to do that right now. Ah, come on, you little clinger. Get off. Okay. So we have that off. Let's cut this one off. Okay. And I'm still going to use these pieces for my spine. I am going to cut off this lip off each of them. But now I'm going to cut my panel down. So it is about, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a quarter inches high. Normally I'd want it a little bit taller, but that is totally fine. Um, cause I'm going to cut my papers down a little bit. Okay. So I just want to make sure that this is even. So I'm going to line it up on. Sorry, I'm trying to line it up. It's not cut straight. So I'm trying to line it up straight so then I can cut it. Okay. So I'm going to cut this to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just a hair over six inches wide. I'm going to cut it to, 
I'm going to cut it to five and three quarters. All right, so one, two, three, four, five and three quarters. So it looks like I'm cutting about a quarter of an inch off, or half an inch off, approx, approximately. Oh, I didn't even say that word right. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so that's going aside. I just want to make sure that this is straight on this end as well. So let's get that up there. Yeah, this isn't straight right here, and it's driving me nuts. Which is it the top? It's this side. Okay. This is the time to take your time and make sure that things are straight. I'm gonna trim this now. Okay, there we go, that's better. All right, so let's trim this one down. I'm gonna turn it this way. All right, so these should be the same now. Fingers crossed. Ta-da! Okay, so these are my panels. So now I'm gonna take this and this, let me trim it first and then I'll tell you how wide it is, giggity. Um, there we go. Maybe I'll just trim it down to an inch. I'll just make it a straight inch. <laughs> I don't know why that sounded funny to me. Oh my gosh, my best friend over the weekend went to a Snoop Dogg concert and she sent me pictures. She's like, just for you. <laughs> so I have all these pictures of Snoop Dogg now. It's so funny. Okay, there we go. So here's my spine. So the reason why I did this is because I wanted more flexibility in my cover opening and closing. Um, don't have to do it this way, but if you have pieces of cardboard and you wanna cut your pieces, oh shoot, I need to make sure that this piece is the same length as well. I didn't do that. It's perfect, is it not? Oh no, it already is. Okay, good. So now I'm just gonna use some masking tape to put them together. And you're probably thinking this is redundant, but it's not, and I'll show you. This will allow my book to open and close more loosely and not so rigid. So what I'm gonna do is I want my pieces to be, now you can do this a couple different ways. You can use a cutting mat like I am and kind of line them all up on here and leave equal spacing and then tape. But what I do is I put half my tape on on the back side of this. Hold on, it'll be less confusing in a second. So I'm just gonna put half of my tape on here. That was a little less than half, that's okay. Okay, so this is how it's gonna be. I'm gonna flip it over and line up the top piece right on top of here. Okay, hold it down so it's right on top of the other piece. Fold this over. Take your time, start in the middle, and go from one side to the other side. Take your time. This will help keep the integrity of your, uh-oh, did mine slide a little bit? Oh, mine slid a little bit. That's why I was getting a wrinkle. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Oh, great. Now I'm scaring Xena again. <laughs> okay. Where's my, um scraper tool. Hello. Where's my stuff? Okay, so I'm just going to press down any of these little wrinkles here. Press that down. So now when I open my spine, oops, the excess tape. Should have cut that off. There we go. So now when I open this up, you will see that there's this little gap here. This is what's going to allow, see how easily my book can open and close now? That little gap by putting this on top of this and then taping it, then opening it back up gave me a natural gap for my book to open and close that's perfectly spaced. Okay, so now all you do is you can either fold these down over the top. I usually just cut them off because that's just how I roll, but you do you. There's no wrong way to do this. I'm going to cut mine off because I just want to. <laughs> Like I said, it's just a personal choice. There's no rhyme or reason. Okay. And snip that off. I could have just used scissors, but I didn't want to. Okay, so now that this is, you want to make sure that you keep this, kind of pull it apart a little bit. Make sure that that, that stays open right there. I'm just going to kind of go in here and 
crease that that space in there okay so now now that I've done that I'm gonna add a piece of tape on the back side and the two sticky parts of tape will hold will stick together and hold very tightly okay like I said I'm just using masking tape from like the Dollar Tree you can use whatever kind of tape you want to use I find masking tape works the best and it's really easy to collage over. So I just lay this over the top. Then I'm just gonna take a tool and just kind of press in to that spine, oops, <laughs> into that spine area. You can use a bone folder. That's what I usually use. I don't know why I'm not. Here we go. Like a bone folder. Just kind of get in there, press those two pieces of tape together. Go on the other side now. So now these two pieces of tape are like welded together, if you will. I'm gonna cut the excess off. This is way easy, you guys, super easy. And if you don't get it right the first time, everything can be taken apart and you can try again. It's, it's really quite simple and it's okay if your first time doesn't work out perfect, nobody's does. And if it does, you're lucky because when you try something new, you're learning, right? So you need to give yourself a little bit of that learning curve. Okay, so now this is all pressed down. So now my flap flaps a lot easier than if it was connected together. Okay, so now you just do the same thing on this side. So I'm just gonna set this on top, go like that. I use a little extra long masking tape. You'll notice I'm cutting off quite a bit of a chunk of it. I do that because I want to give myself enough wiggle room to make sure I get the whole thing covered. There we go. Now I just cover this halfway. Your tape doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just a bit of a perfectionist, so there's that. <laughs> okay, Ooh, pull it up. Oops, put these two pieces together and add your glue or your tape over the edge here, taking your time, start in the middle, work your way to each side. Give it a pressy poo. Okay, open it up and kind of, oh darn it, see I always, <laughs> that's, oops, I just ripped my tape. Uh, that's the downside to not cutting off the tape before you open it back up is I just stuck my tape together. So that's a bummer. Ooh, there we go. All right. So that's nice and open. Let's cut off these excess chunks of tape that are giving me trouble here. Little stinkers. I'm trying to do a video. Why do you have to be so stinkerish? Let's pull this apart just so I get a... Okay. All right. A little show off. Trying to make me look bad on my video. Okay, this tape has to go. Cut it off. All right, there. Problem solved. Let's turn it around and fix this mess. All right, I'm just going to pull this up a little bit. That's the upside to using masking tape. And correct my error. See, we all make mistakes, you guys. It's totally fine. Everything can be fixable. We are crafters. We can do it. We can fix it. All right, let's just cut off that. Ta-da! All right, so... Making sure it's pulled apart, you can see there. And I'm gonna go on the other side here and just kind of make sure I get, oops, there was a little hole in my mat there. There we go. Okay, let's add the tape to this. Like I said, you don't have to do this if you don't mind your cover being a little bit more rigid. I just like mine to be a little bit more floppy. And if you want it even more floppy, make your gap bigger, but I, I just, this is fine. <laughs> I don't need any more wiggly than this. Okay, so we laid that down. Where's my bone folder? Yeah, stick my bone folder in the crack. Give it a little pressy poo. Turn it over Ooh. and trim off the excess. Ta-da! We have a journal cover or a glue book cover or a scrapbook cover or a whatever cover. 
it doesn't matter. These are upside down because I am going to. Oh my gosh. See how like flippy floppy this is now? Oh, so much better. And don't worry, it's still rigid, but this just opens better. It's not so stiff, if you get what I mean. Okay, so now I have my journal cover the size I want it. It is five and three quarters wide, eight and a quarter high. I probably would have done it a little bit taller, but it's totally fine because my papers have a border on them. I accidentally cut. First of all, this kit was so big. I got it for $1.99 on sale and I think I printed 60 pages. I almost went through a whole pack of paper. <laughs> so you got, I got all these half size images. Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot. I messed up. Hold on. Hold on. I was trying to keep these apart. So I got, okay, these are separate. Okay. So I got, um, this is the artist trading cards that came with it. And I'm just curious if they printed to be two and a half by three and a half. Cause I'm just curious here. So they're just shy of three and a half, just shy of two and a half. So yeah, you could add these and then put a border behind them. Super cute. And then it came with like circles and bookmarks. And then these are half pages. So when I fold them in half, you can see that's two different images. Those are the ones I'm going to really put in my book um, for journaling. And I did not print them on double-sided paper. I did not double-side them because I want the white side for me to like write things on or collage on or do whatever. So these are the ones that are going in my book. And then these are more of, grab this. These are um, pockets to put in there. And these are like tags. Oops, that was right. Tags and pockets and tabs. This is so cute. And then here's more tags and labels and that kind of stuff. You can fold these in half and make little tabs on your pages if you want. So that's fun. And then these are full size images that I can also put in my book. So I'm not sure how many of these I'm going to put in there. I'm definitely putting all of these in there, but see how there's a border. I'm just going to cut my border off, which will make my book, my pages just, just about eight inches. So that gives me a quarter inch of space in my cover. So that's perfect. So I have those and then these are my full size images and then these are some extras. Um, these are what I think I'm gonna use to collage. Well, do I wanna use these? I was thinking I could cut these up and put these on the blank pages too if I wanted to. Um, okay, I think I'll save those for that. Okay, so I wanna use some of these to collage on the cover, but I'm also gonna put some in my book. So, ooh. That would be pretty on the cover, wouldn't it? Like this, like just a B. I don't know, we'll save that maybe. Okay, um, I could, let's see. Oops, <laughs> now I'm making a mess. Sorry, Zena. Okay, here we go. I like this one. So everything's kind of like watercolor and bright colors. Uh, let's see here. I could do something like this and just have it be like half on the page. Ooh, I love this one too. Ooh, I love this one too. <laughs> I love them all. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I will collage with, I think these three and four, and then I'm gonna set these aside. I might use those, I don't know. Okay, so let's cut. I'm first gonna cut the edges off. I don't want those. Okay, I need to fix my printer setting. I think I don't have it set to print borderless right now. So, well, that's not true because I do sometimes. I don't know, these didn't come out borderless. I don't know what I did, but that's fine. It actually worked out better for me because I wanted, um, now my pages are smaller. And I like that. Okay, so here we go. Okay, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna glue this like this so it gives me a little bit extra that I'm gonna fold over so it makes my edges really nice. So let's do that. I'm going to use my glue stick for this because it will leave me less bubbles. So, 
So I'm gonna leave about an inch all the way around because I'm gonna fold that over. Give that a nice press. Did I get it all the way over here? No. I did on some, but not on all of it. So let's, there we go. Okay, so now I have it all around. Now I think I'm gonna add, just save this for just a second here. I'm gonna cut the edges off of this one. This still looks good like this. I'm gonna do it like that, okay. So what I'm gonna do is add glue right here because I'm gonna connect these papers and then glue the rest of my book here. All right, go over that one more time just to make sure. And now I'm just going to set, gotta have glue stick lids everywhere. This over the top. It doesn't have to be perfect because like I said, I'm cutting some of this off. Smooth that down. All right. Now, when I flip it over, what I'm going to do is get my blade and my ruler, wherever that is. I'm gonna cut about an inch off of, or leave about an inch all the way around. Doesn't have to be perfect, because this is gonna be covered anyway. So, save that for collage. And I'm gonna cut the same off of this. Start here down at the bottom. I could use scissors. I don't know why I'm not. It's just easier for me sometimes to use an X-Acto knife. I get straighter edges and it's easier on my hands. All right, so we cut that off. I can save that for collage as well. Okay, so now what I am going to do is I will use my scissors for this. So basically you just cut at an angle to the point of your book or this is how I do it. And then an angle going up. So basically you took a triangle out of that side and I'm gonna do that for all four corners. This corner isn't fully glued down, but that's okay. I can add some glue there and I'm gonna wrap this paper around so it doesn't matter because it will get covered anyways. All right, here we go. And like that, okay. So here's what I like to do when I'm wrapping these papers around is I take my bone folder and I make a crease like this along my sides. This helps so much. I can't even express to you how much this helps to fold the paper over and make sure it goes over evenly and doesn't glue wonky, especially when you're rolling over a bigger piece like this. My neighbor's outside talking to his handyman. Okay, so I glue it, or I roll it over first. I just scored it, that helps. This rolls over so nice and easy now. I'm actually gonna press it with my little tool here or bone folder, whatever, before I glue it down. I'm, I'm going to put a lid on here now. And for this, I'm going to use my art glitter glue just because it's fast and easy and it has a very strong quick hold. I love it. And it also has a very fine metal tip that's on it that allows me to get um, little bits of glue and not waste. Although I just went a little heavy on that, but that's okay. Because it's a journal cover, I want it to stay. All right, so now my edge could not be any crisper or cleaner, and I swear it has to do with scoring it first and then pressing it before you glue it. Game changer. Okay, so this one's already scored, but I'm gonna fold it and press it down with my little tool here, making sure that it's creased where it's supposed to be. Open it up, add some glue. Oops, I went under. All right, there we go. Take 
Okay, press it down. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna, oops, those two pieces came apart because I pulled on it. That's all right. Glue it back down. All right, so I folded these over. I'm gonna make sure I give it a press. Same with this side and the middle here. All right. Did this come apart all the way or just a little bit? I felt it come apart. Oh no, it's not fully apart. Here I am trying to tear it. Why am I doing that? All right, let's add glue. Like I said, you can use tape for this, double-sided tape. I, I don't like to do that because I like to have wiggle room in case I need to fix some things. All right, I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way around here. There we go. Okay, now I'll go to this side, starting in the middle. There we go. Okay. Make sure in your, where your um, spine and your book page go together, make sure you're adding that crease mark in there because that will help it close. There we go. All right, let's do the same thing on this side. All right, give that a little crease there where my spine is just so this bends very easily. Now it's really great to wait until this glue dries before you like bend your book, but I'm not going to. Oh, you can see that lifted just a little bit right there. There we go. All right, so there's my cover. There's the back. Gosh, love that. That turned out great. I could add a little something right here if I wanted to. Um, so now I can collage on the cover of my book too. Eek, so exciting. So fun. Okay, but before I do that, I'm jumping ahead. See, I already want to decorate. That's how fun and easy this is, you guys. It goes so fast. You can knock out a bunch of these. Okay, I need to cover this. Yeah, that looks great. So let's just do that. We'll go like this. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll just add something right here too. Actually, I have this piece from when I cut. I could put that underneath like this. That looks good. And then I can just collage or whatever. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Again, just using my glue stick for this. Okay. Purple on the bottom. And there we go. There, that looks good. Okay, and then we'll do this piece over the top. All right, yay! Okay, oops. This is what I was talking about by a little, having a little wiggle room here. Oops, get up there. Ooh. All right, you know what, it's not perfect and that is okay. It's just my inside cover and once everything's in it, you're not gonna be able to tell anyways. Okay. So let's just put that down. Look how well I handled the fact that it's not absolutely perfect around every single edge. I am so proud of myself. It's so close, so I'm not, I'm not worried about it. So I really wanna take the time to press this down. I'm gonna go in with this. I can see where it bends, oops. I want to make sure it dries in the crease like that. That'll help it from lifting when I open my book. Make sure the glue gets nice and in there. Okay. All right, so there's the inside of my book. My cover of my a journal. Oh, that looks good. Okay, so when it bends, see how easy it bends now and it's not bubbling up when it bends? That is cute. Okay, I'm gonna press these back down. I just wanted to show you really quick. And then I'm gonna let it dry flat like this because then it'll open a lot better. 
Okay, so this is my front, this is my back, here's my spine. Let me see, I'm gonna push down on this side too. There we go, just so I can see where that spine is. So now I can decorate. I'm also going to add metal corners. So let me get those out. I think these will look good. One, two, three, four. I'm going to wait until I finish my cover because I might want to add something else to it. I think I can take this away now. Okay, so we have those to add. Let's look at... I really wanted to put... I thought this B on here would look really pretty, so I was kind of thinking about fussy cutting it out. Okay, I have my B all cut out now. I like it much better. So I am going to glue this down. I'm going to use my art glitter glue for the delicate pieces. I'm already about to rip my antenna off. I'll use my art glitter glue for the legs, the little feetsies. Okay, oops, missed a spot. There we go, oh, and right there. All right, here we go. Let's try this out and see if it, so I can see where my thing is my spine sorry <laughs> I'm already concentrating okay so I want to make sure that I get these on correctly first there we go the wings okay all right, I definitely need more glue under my antenna, antennae. So now that I have most of my B glued down, I can use my glue stick there. There, those are not coming up now. New way. All right, feet down. Let's go through the feet and see if they need a little bit of glue stick too. So really easily, gently here, I'm gonna kind of bend these, go back over my spine here where this bends, where the legs are, because I want them to dry in that crease so that when I bend, they don't pop up. Does that make sense? So when I bend it like this, they'll go with the flow of the book. All right, here we go. So now you can see my wing, everything is in that spine. So now it'll dry like that. Is this lifting up right here or is it just the shadow? Nope, it was lifting. I thought I saw something. How dare you? This is another reason why I like art glitter glue because it has this fine little, is it lifting on both sides or just, oh. All right, let's put some glue down. Let's go, was it this? That is stinking cute. That is so cute. I didn't add my little corners yet because I was waiting to see if like, my collage went over the corners. I think for now, this is good. So I will just add my corners right now. All right, so I'm gonna take my art glitter glue and I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue inside my corner there. And I'm gonna push that right up in there. And then I'm gonna use my bone folder and fold those metal pieces over. There we go. Push those down and repeat. You can also squeeze these down with some pliers if you prefer. All right. Okay, so there's the inside of my cover. Here's the outside of my cover and you would never know that this is a Cheez-It box. All right, everyone, that's going to conclude today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I made a cover for my new junk journal. I hope you guys got some inspiration out of this. I think it looks pretty freaking amazing going from a cheese it box to this already. I can't wait to add my signatures into it. It's going to be a blast. If you have any questions about any of this, let me know. I will uh, put a link to this 
uh, paper that or the junk journal kit that I bought. I'm not sure if it's still on sale. When I got it, it was on sale for $1.99 for this entire kit, which I thought was a smoking deal. Um, I downloaded it, printed it, yada yada. Um, not affiliated in any way. I just found this person on Etsy and I liked their kit. So I'll link that down below. Don't forget to give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. All the cool kids are doing it. Don't forget to drink your water. Have a fabulous day and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye friends.